Hello Kickstarter. Today I want to expand on something I started saying in the previous video. When video games were just starting out, flight sims were one of the most popular, best-selling, most impressive genres on the market. Today you hardly see any. I want to change that, and I sincerely believe that I can. No other video game genre has gone through a change quite like this. I've wondered about this a lot. I love flight sims, so seeing such a barren landscape, basically having no choice but to make my own flight sim for myself to play, that always made me think. I've been asking friends about it, co-workers, other industry people for years. Everybody always has the same answer. Flight sims are too hard, it's the learning curve, it's just too hard to fly a plane. And you see, it's just not true. There's this notion that everybody has that flight sims are hard and that is a giant hurdle for a flight sim developer. Lots of people just skip the genre altogether, but lots of other genres have a steep learning curve. For a person who's never tried an FPS in his life, figuring out the controls and becoming comfortably efficient may take a few hours. If you've never played an RTS, getting good can take days. And if you want to play any of those games online, forget it. Some of the more competitive games like StarCraft or, say, League of Legends, look at the learning curve there. In the time it takes you to master a game like that, which is months, you can become the world's deadliest ace in a flight sim. Millions of people are enjoying those games. A lot of the enjoyment comes precisely from the game's difficulty. No one looks at Dark Souls and says, well, cool game, but it'd have a lot more fans if it was easier. So flight sims take a while to learn, but other popular games take longer. Flight sims are hard, but other games are harder then what is it that makes flight sims inaccessible? The answer is deceptively simple. Flight sims are not fun to learn. And here we're going to take a little step back and look at the history of the genre. When I was first getting into flight sims around the late 80s, the learning curve was huge. Gaming altogether was different. No internet forums, no guides on YouTube. It was just you, the PC, and the thick spiral bound manual. Lots of sims tried lots of different things in those days. Some were easier, some were harder, but for me they all had one thing in common. I really wanted to get into them, and I never could. Just crashed and burned and was totally thoroughly confused about everything. My love of aviation eventually led me to take secret flying lessons in a real aircraft. My mother still doesn't know about them almost 18 years later. That somehow finally got me into flight sims. I mostly just skipped in-game training and went straight into combat. I guess mid to late 90s were the golden age of flight sims for me. I remember when two of my most favorite World War II flight sims, Jane's World War II Fighters and Microprose's European Air War, were released within a month of each other in 1998. I flew both of them like crazy, spent insane amounts of time with each of them. Then on the heels of that came something that literally changed my life. This is going to be a little awkward because uh, for reasons I cannot get into, I cannot say the name of the game series that I'm about to talk about, but it's immaterial to my overall point. This guy began appearing on all the flight simulation forums in the world. The guy's name was Oleg Maddox, and he was making a new World War II flight sim. I was just a young computer consultant in New York City at the time, but soon I was so hooked I somehow managed to become a remote member of the team. And going back to the overall point, the title in the original releases credits for me is Designer of Training Missions. That's me. Well, the game, Oleg Maddox's Flight Sim, just exploded into the marketplace. It became a huge hit, totally out of nowhere. Nobody expected that. It swept all the awards, got every Sim of the Year in the world, and even got quite a few Game of the Year awards. Sold a gazillion units, spawned an untold number of sequels and add-ons. The game engine was licensed away, former employees moved off to create an entire industry of derivative products that still thrive to this day. And what that one product did, the product I myself worked on, was yet another thing no one expected. It killed the genre. That incredible killer app that just destroys everything around it. It was so good, no one could compete. Other people continued to release World War II flight sims for a while, but none could compare. Alex game was always not just one step ahead, it was light years ahead of competition. Nobody could enjoy anything else anymore. After a few years, it really changed everybody's minds. People were no longer just making flight sims, they were making something that could beat Alex game. They analyzed it, thought about it, tried to distill its essence for a secret to its success. Everybody had their own answer. I have one too, but we'll get to that in a while. There was, however, one very interesting thing about Oleg's game. 
It was the fact that, with all its power and awesomeness and greatness, there was this tiny little training module designed by a young computer consultant from New York in his spare time. The one thing all its game did not have was an easy way in. The one thing it did have was the learning curve. Everybody else, of course, analyzed that part too. Many understood that accessibility was a problem. Their solution was to make a game that was easier overall. Lots of new derivative flying games that can't even be properly called flight sims hit the market. They're doing rather well, and as a matter of fact, there's a bunch of pretty good flying games coming out in the next year or so. But I personally could never really get into those because, well, they're just too easy. The payoff is not the same. They're like, I don't know, being really good at Dwarf Fortress and then playing one of the arcade alternatives like Dwarves or Towns. Just doesn't have the oomph. Then yeah. on the other hand, the others, myself included, all like and eager, we're all part of it. We've decided, hey, it worked there, why mess with it? We're hardcore, we're realistic, that's how we're gonna keep approaching it. Training has always been an almost an afterthought for us. We were stuck with a late 90s mindset. In the meantime, the rest of the industry evolved. And so, this is where we are today. I believe sincerely, deeply believe that flight sims are some of the funnest, most exciting, most rewarding games out there. There really is no other game that makes you work so hard to earn that prize and makes that prize so cool and exciting to get. First you're sweating and breathing hard and really using your entire body, your hands, your feet, your brain to maneuver and slowly squeeze out that edge that finally gets you lined up on that shot. And then it's almost Michael Bay. Every kill, boom, fire, explosion is just so satisfying, the whole process. The thing is, other games today give you those rewards while you're learning. Gamers naturally, subconsciously expect that. Flight sims today do not do that. You're just sitting there listening to some guy drone on about the Bernoulli principle and ailerons and axis of motion, and then you're sitting there in your boring biplane trainer over boring, peaceful terrain, and you have to fly through a giant glowing ring, and your reward for doing that is a little ding and another glowing ring. And if you make a mistake and crash, you have to start over and listen to the guy drone on about the Bernoulli principle and the ailerons again and again and again and that's what we really have to change this is something that I've been hatching for years this is what I really want to do with DCS World War 2 I want to give you an easy way in I want you to enjoy that learning curve I don't want to do that by lowering the plank the plank is going to be high by staying there the rewards once you master the game are going to be really awesome all I want to do is make sure that getting from here to there is not a chore and that is my secret plan I just want to make sure that a person who's never flown a flight sim before enjoys getting into a realistic flight sim. And as far as repeating the success of Oleg's old game, that's not my goal at all. To me, its success was a one-off. Oleg himself was a huge part of it. He was almost a supernatural entity in those days. A constant presence on every gaming forum on the internet. Promoting, explaining, answering questions, responding to PMs, settling disputes, and always infinitely knowledgeable and an incredible authority on all things World War II. If you're as old school as I am, you'll remember how incredible that presence was. And many other things that made this, his game great, well, you can't repeat that. It was precisely because it was different. Now making a game like that, again, absolutely defeats the purpose. So, I am not making Oleg's game. Even Oleg, who's here working with me, is not remaking his old success. That's why I don't much care if I cannot say the name of the title. I'm not doing a from the makers off thing here at all. I'm making a game that's current, a game that looks great, and yes, a game that is hard. Which is a good thing. It's a game that you enjoy learning. And precisely because it's hard and realistic, the rewards you get in the end are so infinitely satisfying and make it all worth it. And that concludes this video. Please stay tuned for our next installment that focuses on the most important part of the flight sim, the aircraft. Wadey, wow. wow. <laughs> My love of aviation is Jane's World War II fighters and European Air War were released within a month of each other in 1988. No, they were not. 
<laughs> then, on the other hand, well, there is myself included, Oleg and Igor were all part of it. What did I write? I don't want to do that by lowering a blank. <laughs> what the? I'm trying to make a game that's current, a game that looks great, and yes, a game that's hard, which is a good thing. And I forgot what the f I have to say. I'm making a game that you enjoy learning.